Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with Sophie Nalise, who plays Teen Shauna in Yellow Jackets on Showtime. Let's just pick up right with the last episode that just aired. Shauna finally had her baby in this cabin in the mountains. It was a bloody trauma. We finally find out that she's had a son, and then we learn later in the episode that he hasn't survived. It was such an intense episode. Talk about filming the birth scene and just what was the most difficult to to go through in filming that episode? Yeah, it was definitely a big week. I was, um, I mean, very nervous coming into it. I just felt like I had a lot of pressure on my shoulders, obviously. Um, I remember we did a table read for it. And right after all the cast left, Liz Garbus, our director, was like, I would like to just chat with you. And I was like, mm-hmm. And she, as soon as everyone left, I just looked up from my script and started sobbing. I was just so, so overwhelmed. Um, and I just wanted to live up to the expectations. And also, just like the content, I think, is so um, sensitive and emotional. And we wanted to treat it with such respect. And um, I just felt a lot of of pressure and like, you know, offering an episode that people can, that speaks to people that they can relate to. And that's, um, and, and, and to, you know, talk about something that's still such a taboo. Um, and I mean, the week ended up actually going really well. Obviously it was very emotional and, and big days, very tiring. One of the hardest things actually is like, I lose my voice really, really easily. And it was kind of like, maintaining my voice with all the screaming like after two takes I was like people were kept coming in with these hot um ginger lemon throat coat teas uh to keep me (laughs) to keep my voice alive um and yeah just making sure that we kept a very respectful environment on set as well because you don't know what the other cast members have been through what the what the crew has been through um and the girls were just very supportive and 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 gave me so much to play off of I just remember looking at their puppy eyes at at the end when I when they're all sitting around me and that just gave me so much to play off of and and made my life and and my acting scenes way easier well you have such a great you know peer group in this series and and the other young women that you're working with and it the show's not afraid to tackle tough subjects. I mean, not just, I mean, things that are out there that people can't identify with necessarily like being stranded in the woods, but I mean, I abortion and, you know, if Sophie even wanted to have this child and and the difficulties with those decisions, what was it like to navigate those and, and, you know, be part of those stories? I feel very honored to be, to have our writers writing such beautiful, authentic episodes. Um, I mean, this is, it's kind of why I love the art medium that I get to do um, is, yeah, to offer characters that people can relate to and, and and give a voice to the people that can't. And as an audience, that's what I seek in, in movies when I watch movies is to find characters that are relatable um, and that are complex and that aren't black and white and that m- movies that you that stick with you that at the end not everything is like given and you have to like reflect on and and kind of like make your own opinion and I think that's what Yellow Jackets offers like all these beautifully well-written complex rich characters that aren't black and white and that are flawed and that you you love them despite all of their darkness um and I relate so much to, to Shauna in, in a lot of ways. Um, but I think also, like you mentioned, like our, we aren't scared to go into themes or genres or storylines that we need to see more on TV because they've been, you know, like abortion is, is still such a taboo and it's still an ongoing issue. Um, and so to just be able to navigate those waters has, has been a, a like a treat and such an honor as an actor. And there's this dynamic that's been continuing to develop between Shauna and Lottie. And Shauna actually wakes up to see Lottie breastfeeding her her baby. And then she tells Shauna, you'll understand soon enough. And it's sort of creepy. Um, Can we, what, can we expect this rivalry and dynamic to sort of 
continue to escalate through the rest of the season. Yes, the the following episode is a great episode for um, Shauna and Lottie. A lot goes down. Um, and Courtney and I are actual best friends in real life. So we were like kind of excited to to play that rivalry on screen. Um, I think they're they're both so interesting because they both represent kind of two separate point of views. I think I relate to Shauna in the way that I'm much more so grounded and, and realistic and have um, uh, like a very, uh, a way of seeing things that's maybe a little more strict and, and, and I love that Lottie. Yeah. I, I just don't always believe in like, I know it's a big thing now to believe in like astrology and like your moon and your rising. And, um, although I admire it, I, I, and I respect it. And I think it's a beautiful way of seeing things. Yeah. I think I, I have more of a linear perspective on life. And I think that, um, but I do think that you need hope and especially in their situation, they need something to cling on to, to survive. So I think Lottie's point of view absolutely makes sense. And I think the writers have done such a, a great job at like navigating this fine line where it's kind of left up to interpretation. Like, is it the woods? Is there really a calling? Is there like a power that's beyond them or are they just or is it more like Shauna's version of it where they're like she sees them as them just kind of like losing their minds and losing grasp on like reality um and and yeah they're a little dehumanized um and so I think it it you know to each of their own I think the audience can kind of decide where which path they want to follow and also there doesn't need to be a path that you have to follow you can kind of sit in in the middle and be there's no right or wrong there's not a good answer maybe they are crazy but maybe not and that's okay and we have to go back to episode two when Shauna kind of grants permission for everyone to eat Jackie. I mean, this was just another wild moment in the series. What were your thoughts and how that all played out and, you know, what Shauna's motivations were in that moment or desperation in that moment? I think it's really interesting that Shauna's the one that gives the okay. I never honestly would have expected that. I thought she was going to kind of get bullied into doing it. Um, And I think it just adds to how complex and and conflicted and twisted she feels inside um I think with the, the the ear it was kind of somewhat of an accident that it was put in her pocket and then from that point on it's kind of like when you just have an itch you have to scratch and like once the idea was planted in her head she just can't get rid of it um and then to finally full-on consume her I think it's just the closure that she needs um and it's twisted but almost a form of like respect that she's the one that allows it because it was her best friend and and um yeah I think it's almost like to honor her that it's Shauna that can make the first step um and I I just think she needed to do it for her sanity I mean obviously I think she's um legitimizing it because of the baby the baby needs to feed and she needs to feed and we won't survive winter without her but I think also a lot of it is like part of her wants to and you see it in the first two episodes like is clinging on to Jackie's essence and memories of her because it's the only thing that's moving her forward but I think her unconscious kind of knows that she needs to cut cords and she needs to fully put her um, behind and I don't think that she'll ever be able to until she's finally gone and then there's this I mean the writers explain this so beautifully in this one interview but there's this like weird concept of like I think I don't know exactly how she feels about Jacqueline but I do think that there's some sort of like jealousy and wanting to become her to a point where like she consumes her and she sort of carries her within her forever a bit dark but yeah it that scene's also just savage I mean just the way that they're consuming her it's just gory it's bloody what was that like and what were you eating and just what was that experience for you 
it was wild. I think none of us have ever gotten to experience a scene like that. And I remember a mid scene, or like when they called cut, all of us just looking up to each other and having this moment of like, what are we doing? Like, this is insane. Um, what we were actually eating. So within her body that was created by the visual effects people, they had these like little pockets. They're like, this is where you can eat. So there was like these little pockets of edible food, which was um, jackfruit, which we called Jackie fruit. <laughs> um, yeah. Weird joke. And That's then brilliant, by the way. <laughs> um, and then we had, it was like rice paper that had been like, uh, it was cooked and it just gave this like el- elasticity form that um appeared to be um skin <laughs> um and it was just even though it was actually yummy um it was like it looked so realistic and that our brains had a hard time disassociating and just being like this is just fruit we're eating it felt so real that we were all gagging and sammy puked and it it just it didn't taste good just because it just looked so real but what i what i did love was i mean i think that it's such a beautiful job at doing this parallel with this big greek table um that we all thought was gonna be really fun to shoot which it was because it was like we were dressed differently and it was it was so festive but by the end our director ben was like i want you guys to go just absolutely feral um and we started just picking at anything and everything we saw on the table and I remember and like shoving whatever we could in our mouth and then I remember picking food from Courtney's plate but she had just eaten it and spat it out so I was eating her like pre-chewed mixture of like wine and cheese and soggy bread mixed with mushrooms and it was disgusting and I put it in my mouth and I was like don't break character don't break character and it was so disgusting um and we were just literally drenched in wine and had like food pieces in our undergarment it was like everywhere um but it was fun. I mean, really, I mean, this is what I love about my job. Like you, you get to be pushed to extremes that no one else has ever experienced and, and scenes and, and moments that just are completely out of your comfort zone. Um, and it, it was, it was interesting, but I'm, I'm really glad. And now we, it's like, we have this weird bond because of it where we're like, no one has experienced what we've been through and only we can relate to how disturbing that day was. What is the location like for you? I mean, you're filming on location. What what are you out in the cold? Is that an effect that we're seeing? You, what are the extremes that you're going through on set, and and how does that help build your character? Not just the, I mean, the production design is is fantastic, but also the costumes. You're in this pregnancy belly. I mean, there's so many things and and uh, creative minds helping you get into character. Mm-hmm. Well, the first season we shot in um, a forest that's about an hour outside of um, the city of Vancouver. And so we were really getting, you know, down and and dirty and we were doing scenes and like rolling in the mud. And um, we were shooting in this cabin, um, a lot of night shoots, and it really felt like we were our characters. Um, And then this season, we actually were shooting in studio to be able to control the amount of snow that we wanted. And so we had to have layers and layers and layers of clothes while being in like this inside cabin that's actually lit by a real fire pit. So we were actually sweating and we were so hot. Um, And it's really, I mean, I thought that I knew how to be cold coming from Montreal and knowing what freezing feels like. And it's actually really hard when you're sweating to pretend like you're shivering and also keeping that physicality because when you're so cold, it really does affect your body language, the way you hold yourself, the way your your mouth gets kind of like almost you can't articulate properly and you're like shaking your teeth. Um, so it was kind of hard to maintain that. And we had to keep reminding each other. And before every day, we're like, remember, like we're supposed to be cold in this. Um, but it was also, I mean, it comes with perks of like 
we were just more comfortable. Like we could go back to our tra- trailers between setups and we were closer to home. Um, and I'm very intrigued to see what we're going to do with this um, third season. Well, you know, season one got seven Emmy nominations, including best drama series. It was, I mean, such a big deal. And now you've been bumped up to lead actress in, in terms of what Showtime is thinking in terms of Emmy consideration, which is a great deal of respect to you and that young cast. I've spoken with Melanie Linsky and Christina Ricci. They couldn't speak higher praise of, of what you all are doing on the show. What has it been like for you to have, even though you're not in seeds with them, actors of that caliber working on the same series and just having that camaraderie as a whole? I mean, it's very overwhelming, like the way Melanie, I mean, and Christina and, and how they talk about us, it's just so touching. And I mean, it's, 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 we're put in such a, I mean, I feel a lot of pressure being in my position because in some way, I don't want to say that I'm, I'm obviously not like laying the groundwork, but I like, she sort of has to play off of like what I've set up for her. And that's just a lot of pressure on my shoulders because she is, I mean, a pioneer, Melanie is like a pioneer of the industry. And I mean, does such beautiful work. And I mean, she brings such a, a like a complex and and profound um, and, and depth to Shauna that I can only, like a, she sets the bar so high, I can only aspire to be like one tenth of how good she is. Um, and not only like as an actress, like on a human level being, she, um, is so there for the cast. She's like our, our mom on set. And she always makes sure that we feel comfortable, that we feel listened, that we have someone to trust that we can go to if we ever had any concerns. Um, and she's been so present for me and so generous and kind. And I, I, I think it's so sad that I don't get to work with her and and see her and, and learn from her on set like see what's her process and um because I can only try to learn from what I see afterwards and it's kind of fun because it's like watching a whole other show because we have we don't even see glimpses of what they're doing so when we get to watch the show it's like oh wow this is a whole other reality that we don't really experience um but yeah it's it's I mean the way they they speak about us I mean we just try to be as good as they are and so the fact that they're recognizing our work and, and speaking so highly of us is I mean all we can ask for well it's been such a great season we can't wait for to see the rest of it um we also know that season three's also been renewed already so uh people can look forward to that and congratulations to you the entire cast and crew best of luck this Emmy season we hope to hear a few of your names on nominations morning and Sophie thanks for chatting with Gold Derby today. Such a pleasure. 